Hi everyone and welcome to another edition of Ask Rob Trek where I try to answer your questions from the comment sections of my other videos and if you have any questions feel free to leave them down in the comments below of this video and I'll try to get to them as well. Uh, today's question is from David Lawrence and it's quite a long post but he's uh, he recently got a new OM1 and he says, uh, mostly happy, but the exposure compensation button is driving me insane. You press it, you turn to the dial and nothing happens. Press it again and it's working. Press it again and it's not and so on. It's like the button is operating in two different modes. Uh, I've now assigned the compensation to the front dial. So I think I know what's going on and I'm gonna make an assumption that we're talking about when you're in manual mode. And that's because when you're in PA or S mode, the exposure compensation is by default the front dial, so you don't need to assign it. However, in manual mode, the front and rear dials are assigned to uh, shutter speed and aperture, uh, respectively. And uh, it seems like you had to reassign one of those to be exposure compensation, which is not ideal when you're in manual mode. So let me see if I can explain what's happening here. And you actually answered the question in your question in that the exposure compensation button is acting in two different modes. Uh, what it does, it does two things. One, it will switch control from the dials to the D-pad back here. That's one thing it does. The other thing it does is exposure compensation. And this behavior is true, uh, I believe at least since the M1 Mark II. But the way, what you need to pay attention to when you're pushing this button, if I push and hold it now, you'll see the exposure compensation uh, numbers pop up. And if I rotate either the front or the rear dial, I can adjust the exposure compensation. And if I push and hold it again, still no problem, right? However, if somehow you inadvertently do a short press on the exposure compensation button, you'll notice that the shutter speed and the aperture now don't have dial icons above it. Well, if you wait too long, they'll, they'll go back. But let me short press. See how it changes? If I short press again, I'm back to dial mode. If I short press again, I'm down to uh, D-pad or arrow pad mode. So now I can, I'm controlling the shutter speed and aperture with the D-pad on the back. So I'll short press it. And if I go up and down, I'm adjusting shutter speed. If I go left and right, I'm adjusting aperture. And if I wait a few seconds, it'll default back to the dials. When you press and hold the exposure compensation button, you need to make sure you're in the dial mode because if I'm in this mode, the D-pad mode, and press and hold it now, what it does Instead of activating exposure compensation, it actually puts the camera back in the dial mode. And even though I'm holding the exposure compensation button, the dials are active and not exposure compensation. But if I let go and press and hold it while it's in the dial mode, now the exposure compensation is coming on. So this really hasn't been a problem for me. And, and maybe that's because I've kind of developed a muscle memory or workflow with my fingers that that, that doesn't cause a problem, but uh, I can see where when you're coming from another system, I think you said you're coming from Nikon or coming from, or maybe this is a brand new system for you. That can be very, very confusing because it's not described in the manual very well at all. And I was digging and I was trying to find a way to disable it, but I didn't see a way to disable it either. Uh, because normally my D-pad is assigned for moving the focus point around. That's how I like to do it. Um, I don't do it as much now, now that I have a, a joystick, but uh, even when you have the D-pad assigned to do other things, because you can assign it to certain functions or you can assign it to be uh, the autofocus, uh, moving the point around, it doesn't change the behavior of the exposure compensation button. Uh, it still toggles between the D-pad and the dials. All right, now I want to share with you one more tip when you're working with exposure compensation. So let's say I press and hold and I dial in plus 2.3, right? And then I want to quickly go back to uh, zero. I would just press and hold the exposure comp and then also press and hold the OK button. And now we're back to zero. So press and hold the exposure comp, press and hold the OK button, and it will go back to zero. All right, the second question was, uh, with face and eye tracking on, if I have pressed the shutter button to take a shot, the box around the face and eye disappear. 
let go of the button and they appear again. Trying some family shots over Christmas couldn't solve this. Uh, surely the boxes could still be visible while taking the shot. Help, any suggestion would be grateful. Hope that made sense regards. Okay, so yes, I think uh, this is another case where I have to make some assumptions about what your settings are. So let's go into the camera and see if I can demonstrate what I think is happening. So let me take off the uh, lens cap. We're in aperture priority and I have face detect with eye detect on SAF. Uh, and let's see if I zoom up here, I put a picture of myself up here for demo, but you can see the face detect box on there, right? And if I get a little closer, the eye detect will come on. And now I'm half pressing the shutter button because you can see the image stabilization came on. And if I let go of the shutter button, the face detect and eye detect there, if I half press it, the face detect and eye detect, no problems, right? And it doesn't matter if I have the uh, focus box large or small. When I have face detect on, it's going to always find a face and focus. I think what you're doing is you're actually in continuous autofocus plus tracking. Because now when I have pressed the shutter button, you'll see that the face detect goes away and it goes into tracking mode. And I strongly uh, advise you don't use this mode. It's, it's really not very good. Of course, it's doing just fine here. But if I, if I go out of frame and come back, you can see... Eh, actually, it's not bad right now. But don't use it. You always want to be in SAF, which I demonstrated, or CAF. So when I'm half pressing the shutter button, the box doesn't disappear, it stays. So I think that's what's happening is you're using CAF plus tracking, but you want to use just the CAF or SAF and just forget about the tracking mode. Now, if that's not the case, just let me know in the comments below, but hopefully you found that helpful as well as others. And if so, maybe consider buying me a coffee or making a small donation in the links below. But I appreciate you watching and I hope to see you all again soon.